friends. How is everyone today? We are going to color a, wa a rainbow wall with. <laughs> I can talk, I swear. <laughs> Apparently I need more coffee. <laughs> a rainbow walrus today. Because, I mean, why not, right? You guys are always asking for rainbow stuff. And so, I feel like a, a rainbow walrus is in order. <laughs> oh my god, I cannot talk. Okay. Here is our sweet little walrus. And this is from the brand new set that just released. Um, it is called I Am the Walrus. So um, go ahead and sing the song inside your head. <laughs> By all means. Um, and we will get started coloring this little guy. Hi, Michelle. Yay for rainbow. Yeah, right? Until your taskmaster wakes up. Boop, boop, de boop. <laughs> that sounds like Betty Boop. Um, yeah, so here's the little walrus. There's two of them in the set, then their ice block, and their little bucket, and then this says, I am the walrus, and then I will walrus be your friend. So, super cute. Um, if There's also matching dies, so of course, if you would like the dies, you can go for that too. Um, but we're going to color this little guy, so let me zoom in. There we go. Um, if you have any friends to tag or anything, please tag them so they can say hello as well. I am going to pull out this awesome little, this is my hex chart, my mini hex chart. So I'm gonna tag a couple of people that usually ask to be tagged. Um, and some of the design team members just so that they know that we're live. Thanks, babe. My husband just brought me coffee. I know, right? He would be really cute with the seal um, and then their little penguin friend. Wouldn't that be adorable? Um, Leah is here briefly. Leah's working on a super secret project for me, so we'll let you know when that when that um, materializes. Um, let's see. I hate when it doesn't like pop up their name and then I have to like type in the whole thing. Um, <laughs> Holly likes to be here and Essie likes to be here. All right. Mickey likes to be here. See if Sherry's around. Okay, so now we're gonna start choosing colors. So um, I like to kind of create my rainbow as my color spectrum from shadow to shadow. And so I'm gonna start with R89. I usually always pull out my BV29 um, because it's a super important marker for shadowing. And it's one of those chameleon markers that, you know, no matter what you do, it it um, it works. So then R89, then I like R39, I like R29. Um, then we kind of go into the oranges. And um, I like R05 because it's a reddish orange. I like YR18. Um, and I may or may not use all of these. I just like to, you know, kind of toss them all out there. Um, so that I have them like handy and ready. Um, I like Y38. I like to go down in here into Y15. 
Um, and then I like a super light yellow, so let's use Y04 today. Um, Tyler likes to be here for sure. Kirsten likes to be here. Good morning, love. Um, then I like to go into the greens. So YG21 um, is a favorite of mine. And then now we're going to start, now that we have our dark spectrum on this side, we're going to start going into highlights and then back into darks. So YG21. Um, I'm going to go something like YG25. Um, and then YG, do I want 17? That's pretty tonal. I want to do, uh, let's do YG09. We're going to go like super dark. Where is it? There it is. Okay. Then I'm going to go into my blue greens. So I'm going to start with like a greenish color. Um, we're going to do... Are you guys there? Okay. So for some reason, whenever anybody turns on the microwave in my house, my phone weirds out. So don't mind the fact that my phone does funky things when people are cooking. <laughs> BG45. And I want to go dark. So we're going to go BG. Well, I don't want to do super dark. I want to do. Let's do like BG07. Are y'all still here? Hi, Mama. There we go. Um, then we're going to go into the purples. So obviously I like to do like a bluish purple because, you know, that's the realm that we've ended up in. So I'm going to do BV04. BV04. If I can find it. Uh, watch my fingers probably on it. There it is. Um, and then BV17 I really like, and then I'm going to go purple, purple with V17, and now we have our full spectrum, okay? So there's a little bit of planning that goes into coloring, um, it does sound like a sci-fi movie, doesn't it? <laughs> okay grab a sip of coffee because I mean I can't complain to my husband for using the microwave when he brought me coffee so <sighs> okay so we have this cool little walrus dude and we are going to start coloring so what I like to do is um I like to go in with like my darkest red and first I want to think about do I want him rainbow this way or do I want him rainbow this way? And I personally like to do him vertical, like rainbow vertically. So I'm going to start with my BV29 and I'm going to come in wherever I would have like the deepest, darkest shadows. Again, this marker is a chameleon. And what that means to me is that no matter what I put this marker next to, it's going to take on that color. So if I use this marker with reds, it's going to look red. If I use this marker with blues, it's going to look blue. If I use it with oranges, it's going to look orange and so on and so forth. So um, if you do not own BV29 in your marker repertoire, um, definitely should be high on your list. Um, and the other thing is, is this marker does work, um, if you use like pro markers or spectrum noir markers, um, you can use this marker in conjunction with those. The inks will blend together. Um, do you want to know how many markers I pulled? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19 markers. Now, you don't have to use all of them, and I may or may not use all of them, but as most of you know, I may or may not add to them as well. So, there's that. So, let's watch this little guy develop here. So, I've used this just in the part that I'm going to do the, the red, just the darkest part. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and take this marker. It is a very full rainbow. And I'm gonna put this at the end of my lineup next to my purples because it's gonna be both the beginning and the end. So now I'm gonna go into my R89 and we're gonna add shadows on the lowest extremities wherever there would be shadow. The biggest thing to remember about coloring rainbow stuff is that you still wanna go along with your same shadows and stuff. Like don't abandon your light source and everything just because you're coloring a rainbow. Where are Lee and Cameron? They always want me to color rainbows. Here I am coloring rainbows without them. Yeah, it is definitely double duty, for sure. Hi, Natalie. So yeah, just don't abandon what all you've learned about light source and all of that stuff because it's still important. Okay, so you see I've just put red like on the lowest part of my walrus. And then I take my markers and wherever I start with at the beginning, I move it and put it at the end. So I know like where I left off. Um, the other thing I do is once I use a marker, I start it with the brush tip this way. And once I use it, I end it with the brush tip this way. So I know what I've used and what I haven't used. So my next is R39. And again, we're just gonna follow those shadow lines. The key to this is that we are working towards the highlights still. Right? Hi, pal. Your tiny little dictator yelling at you, telling you he wants food and entertainment. He's cute, though, so, I mean, there's that. Okay. And I missed this spot on his stomach, so I'm gonna go up there. Okay, everybody with me so far? We're good. He's lucky he's cute. <laughs> I would have put him and all of his stuff in the tree for the fairies to take. What if the fairies didn't take him? I wonder what happened then. Because I've read all of that stuff, you know, how the Celtics used to leave their babies in the trees for fairies. Um, but what if the fairies didn't take them? Like, what if the baby was still alive? Weird. Weird. What a weird legend and custom. So odd. Okay. Okay. You would just have to take them back, right? Then you'd be the talk of the village because you would have a cursed child. But that's okay, because then you could send them to Hogwarts. So, I mean, that's a plus. <laughs> We're not book nerds or anything, are we? You can tell all the stuff that we read. Okay, so again, just blending all of this together. He looks like he was dipped in red. Okay, so now this is one of those transition colors. This is that red-orange. This is the R05. 
And notice I'm using this as like the highlight in the darker parts, but then it's gonna be like my mid-tone up here. So just FYI, that's um, what I do. And I also do a little bit of the tip-to-tip -tip blending. So I just take this orange, I rub it on the red marker, and I make it just a little bit more red to ease that transition between the two, just in the highlight areas. Because Copic only has 358 colors and we all know that that is not enough. Right? Who's with me on this? <laughs> Baby boss is awake. Bye. What are you guys all out there doing today? Happy Friday. It is Friday. Oh my gosh. Did I tell you guys what happened to me? And like <laughs> my lack of ability to read a calendar, I suppose. Um, I had a doctor's appointment on Thursday, which was yesterday, I know, um, at the allergist. So we're trying to figure out, you know, what my allergies are and, you know, why I keep on having all these stomach aches and, you know, blah, blah, blah. You guys know all that stuff. So I drive down there. And it's like a half an hour drive to where the doctor's office is. Not too bad, but you know, not great either. And I get to the doctor's office and I go to open the door and the door's locked. And I'm like, whoa, that's weird. I wonder why the door's locked. And I look on the door and it says closed on Wednesdays. And I'm like, hmm. So I go back to my car and I look at my phone and I realize that it's Wednesday. So I had a wasted trip to Boise, super fun for me. So I didn't waste it entirely. I went to Duck Donuts, got some donuts for my family. Um, then went to Hobby Lobby, you know, <laughs> right? Yeah, okay, so I feel better that it wasn't just me. Um, so I got duck donuts and I went to Hobby Lobby and then I came home. And the the bummer part was is that I had canceled the live, you know, cuz I was going to be gone because it was Thursday and I had a doctor's appointment. <laughs> it wasn't actually Thursday. It was Wednesday. And I didn't really have a doctor's appointment. <laughs> so I had to cancel the live two days in a row because I apparently decided to live Thursday twice. So there's that. Okay, so we're going to keep building on this color. Notice I'm coming up into my highlights. So I'm in my yellows. You can do more tip to tip blending if you want, or since I'm using awesome sweet sentiment paper, I can super saturate to make those blend like I want them to. I'm going fairly high up with the yellow because I wanna use it as the shadow for my greens. Am I staying in the screen for y'all? So, so yeah, yesterday I went to the allergist and I had like the awesome, you know, skin prick tests for literally everything under the sun. Um, this one was all the environmentals, so all the plants and trees and all that stuff. And at the end of it, the doctor comes in and he says, I know, right? Total premature senior moment. Thanks, mom. <laughs> So the doctor comes in at the end of it and he was like, so 
basically you're allergic to going outside. And I was like, oh, well, that's awesome. He's like, pretty much all spring and fall, you just need to stay indoors. It's not going to cut. It's not going to turn out well for you. I was like, oh, well, that's kind of amazing. Thank you for that. And he's like, Claritin and Zyrtec and Flonase are going to be your best friends. I'm like, awesome. So I did learn that. Um, and I had some pretty, pretty wicked reactions. So my next appointment, um, which is at the end of February, I get to go test my penicillin allergy and that's not going to be fun. Um, so much so that they don't even do it at that office. They have to do it, um, downtown Boise by the hospital. So that should be interesting. Look, he looks like lava. just all the way to Sunday. <laughs> okay, so this is the point where in rainbow coloring, I kind of abandon ship and do things a little bit backwards. So instead of continuing to build into the highlight, um, I now come down from the shadow on this side and go down. So I'm going to go back to my BV29. Yeah, I did food ones. I am allergic to peas and peanuts, and I have a sensitivity to almonds. So yeah, sad days for me. I love almonds. Um, I'm totally into peanut butter, um, but not anymore, apparently. So there's that. Um, but those I did a couple of weeks ago. I did those like right before Christmas. So I knew about those. Which stinks because my dad makes this um, dish for Christmas and it's garlic peas and mushrooms. And um, it's literally the best. And then my mom makes like a ton of candies and all this stuff and was all just so amazing and I couldn't have a bunch of it. The floor is lava. <laughs> That's him. He is the floor. He is the lava. Okay, so I'm going to come in with my purples. Because like I said, we're going to go backwards. We're going to go around his eye. Um, did everybody see the schedule of shows that we are going to be at this year? We, meaning Sandy and I, are going to be traveling a ton and going to a lot of different shows. And hopefully going to have the ability to meet a bunch of you sweeties out there across the U.S. So that's going to be wicked fun. I know, right? Mom, Tyler will give you his forwarding address. He would love for you to just send him all the candy. I mean, and at seven feet tall, he, he needs the nourishment. <laughs> oh my gosh, so I thought that I was 5'2". And the nurse, she was like, how tall are you? And I'm like, 5'2". And she's like, no, you're not. And I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm like 5'2", you know, like 5'2 and a half or something, like getting close to 5'3". She's like, dude, you are so not. Come out here. 
And so she made me go out into the hallway and she measured me. And she was like, you are 5'3 three and 3 quarters. You are almost 5'4. And I was like, what? So I'm so much taller than I thought I was. Um, yes, I believe we have a show in Virginia. Um... Oh, yay, Michelle. I know we're going to be in Texas a couple times. Yes, we are. But they're all in, um, like, Dallas area. I think one's in Fort Worth, and I think one's in Irving. So, I don't know what part of Texas you're in, but I think you're more southern than that. Not sure. So then this just becomes a matter of working yourself through your markers. I like to kind of color morph everything so I don't adhere to a strict like purple, like the lines. Sandy, good morning. Yeah, you know who Tyler is, mom. He came over to the house. Him and his wife, Cameron, came over when you were decorating for Christmas. Tyler's my little big brother. <laughs> He's another child that you can adopt. And they have a daughter, um, Charlotte, who is just cute like a little Cabbage Patch kid. So there you go. Another grandbaby just for you. And they're still young. They're going to give me a nephew. I know, Jen. I can't wait for April, too. Sandy and I are so excited to go, like, everywhere. Um, we're just stoked. So we can't wait to meet a whole bunch of you and um, the shows are so much fun for us. Sandy does the make and takes um, and she is a freaking rock star at the make and takes. Um, I hover around the booth and answer questions and talk to people. Um, and then we're looking for volunteers if anybody wants to volunteer to work in the booth. Um, we're looking at for volunteers. So if you see, um, and a lot of shows we already have volunteers for, so not every show, um, are we looking for volunteers for, but, um, if you see a show that is near you and you want to volunteer for a day or two in the booth, whatever you feel like, um, you can come hang out and work with us. So super fun. They are long days, so if you can only work, you know, for a little bit, we totally understand that. Um, but we decided it would be super fun to have a bunch of you guys, you know, come down and work with us and hang out um, in the booth. Thanks, Jen. That was nice of you to go look up. Of course, you probably have it handy because, yeah. Look at this guy. Look at how fast he's coming together, too. That's what I love. Rainbow seems so intimidating until you, like, really get into it and start, I mean, just get out of your own head and start coloring. And once you start coloring, it really comes together. He's so fun. Who's a rock star? Jen? Yeah, Jen's a rock star for sure. I actually hate using that rock star. Um, <laughs> because when I think of a rock star, okay, so in my brain, this is how my brain works. Are you guys ready for a little like scary travel into the brain waves of Jamie. Here we go. When somebody says you're a rock star, I always take it like, I know they mean it to be a compliment, but to me, it's totally, I know it's very scary, Tyler. <laughs> um, 
I always take it like totally the wrong way because I'm like, okay, when I envision a rock star, I envision like somebody who drinks to excess, takes a bunch of drugs, um, is now don't get me wrong. I know that going on tour and stuff is hard. Like, trust me with us going to all the shows and everything. But I mean, come on, like you don't have to like constantly work like your average person has to work like every single day. Um, you know, so you're not like punching a time clock kind of thing. So to an extent, they're a little bit lazy. They party all the time. They sleep a lot. So if somebody says, um, yes, it is the Stamp and Scrapbook Expo. You are correct, Amy. Um, so when somebody says, dude, you're such a rock star, I'm always like, eh, thanks. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why that's what comes to my brain, but it is what comes to my brain. So I'm always like, rock stars are lazy and drug addled and a lot of them are very, um, like elitist, like, oh, I'm a rock star. I'm so much better than you. And I honestly hope that I'm not like that. <laughs> I don't want to be a rock star. <laughs> Sorry, Sandy. I didn't mean to like throw you under the bus with that. It's just what comes to my brain. You know how random my brain is. Look at this little guy, how fun he is. Okay, so now I'm into my yellows. This is the Y04, and I'm going to go ahead and fill in this section of, like, all the highlights and where the green and the orange come together. Because I have one more yellow, and it's a darker yellow, and so it'll kind of ease that transition. So I'm going to go back and forth between these two um, to lay in a couple of layers. Um, not necessarily because Copic markers layer. And so since they layer, you're going to see one color through the other. So it's not necessarily going to make brown because they don't mix like, like you would imagine paint mixing. So, um, you're going to see the, the orange through the yellow and the green and you're not going to, it's not going to read as a brown color. And like I said, I'm going to go back and forth a couple of times between these two colors to really ease that transition. Okay. Now, the other thing right here that I notice is I have like a stark line between this red and this orange. So I'm actually going to go back to my R05 and lay in another layer of that. just to kind of ease that transition a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to come in with my darkest yellow, which is that Y38. And I'm going to go across the transition of the red. So this is just like fine tuning it once you're done. And you're not going to hurt your markers by doing this. They are alcohol markers. They will, the alcohol will dissipate and you will be fine. That's why tip to tip blending is a thing. I mean, and you can see how much ink I'm laying on here. I'm like super saturating this paper. Totally fine. And I'm going to go back to that Y04. And I'll show you the back of my paper. I've probably colored through onto my desk mat. Oh, I haven't. But see, I mean, I've super saturated that paper. <laughs> of course, Michelle. Ooh, Jen, have fun and travel safe. Okay, 
So since those 19 markers weren't enough, we're gonna pull out three more markers, which is E55, E53, and E51. And I'm gonna use these to color his tusks. So here's E55, I go up into the shadow. Not a lot needed. Here's E53. Um, if you guys have not seen, we have a retreat, a virtual retreat that you can sign up for. It's the spring break virtual retreat. Um, and the spring break virtual retreat is happening this second weekend in February. Um, it's all going to happen here on Facebook. Well, not here, but, you know, on Facebook. Um, and it will be um, in a private Facebook group. And there will be all kinds of fun stuff. You guys know how our retreats go. So, um if you do not have the capability to print digital images, don't worry. Um, I know, right? <laughs> um, a rainbow lolly. Hi, Allison. And thanks, Sandy. If you do not have the capability to print digital images, don't worry about it. Because you can add the digital print pack to your cart when you order the retreat and we will print the digital images for you okay so I just darkened up his eye a little bit and here he is so now what we're gonna do is um, I'm gonna set these markers aside and we're gonna do a little ink blending to finish off our card so first things first is let me zoom out for you. Okay, I am going to go to the back of my package and I'm going to grab my die. That is the wrong walrus, my bad. Okay, and I'm gonna go cut him out real fast. So talk amongst yourselves. So here he is, and we take special time to make sure that our dies cut everything out um, as much as possible, but for me, there's still little spots that sometimes, um, uh, Amy, you can print from the printer yourself, or you can order the digital print pack, and we will print the digis and send them to you. And it's only $4.99 for the digital print pack. And you get two of each digi. So that just in case you mess one up. And the reason for that is literally just paying for shipping. So. Okay. So I just like to cut out that little piece because you guys know how anal retentive I am about that stuff. So you don't have to. Completely optional. But that's what I do. Okay. Then, I'm going to move that aside. I have a piece of sweet sentiment paper here. And this is A2 size, except for I've cut it down. Um, so, instead of being four and a quarter by five and a half, this is four and an eighth by five and three eighths. Um, mainly because I like my stencils or my backs to be a little bit smaller than my card base. So I have pulled out three um, Distress inks. So I have Black Soot, Hickory Smoke, and Weathered Wood. Um, obviously black and gray. And then I wanted a little bit of that gray blue in there just to kind of tent the color. 
I'm going to use my brand new Manly Mandala designed by Sandy Ledoux. And as you can see, I'm a terrible, terrible person and I um, never wash my stencils. So don't mind me. So my pixie spray is nowhere, oh yeah it is, it's right there, but I'm gonna show you another way to, to do this is, ooh, that side is way more sparkly on this piece of paper. Oh, I guess it's not. So I'm gonna set this just like in the middle ish. I'm going to push it on and then I'm going to use some tape. And this is the tape that I used the other day on my dies. So as you know, I always reuse my tape. This is frog tape. I love this stuff. I believe it's on the list. If it's not, I'll go add it. I have a few things I need to add to the list. So now I have my stencil there. Um, I also like to like tack it down onto my piece of paper um, so it's not all wiggling around and stuff as I'm trying to stencil. So I just used all my pieces of tape again. Um, it's okay. No problem, Amy. Um, thanks, Allison. It was, it was um, a very measured decision. We decided that really, really needed to happen. So, so I'm going to start with weathered wood. I have my my bunny blending brushes from the rabbit hole designs. I don't even think they sell these anymore. Um, but I have one for each oxide ink and for each distress ink. So I'm gonna pick up some ink. I'm gonna kind of blot it off a little bit and I'm gonna start with really light pressure. And I know that there's brown on the stencil and I know that that brown is gonna come into whatever I'm stenciling and I'm okay with that. Um, most of the time I would wash this off so that I didn't, um, contaminate the colors, but I'm totally okay with that brown being in here because I mean, it's a walrus, so you know, whatevs. So hickory smoke is my next one. I always hold the head of my brush like this so I know how much pressure I'm putting on my brush. And I'm kind of doing like a dark light, dark scenario here. And I'll show you what I mean when I'm done with this. Pick up a little more ink. I just think that extra brown on there is going to add to this. I don't think it's going to detract from it. Bye. My husband's going to do the grocery shopping because he is awesome. And he knows how much I hate going to Costco. So I'm going to go back to my weathered wood. And I'm going to add a little more of this bluish color to the center here. And I want this to be a little bit muted because um, I know the brushes. Um, and then this is just my brush from the hickory smoke that I'm going to soften the edges with. Um, because of the rainbow walrus, I want this to be a little bit muted. Okay, so now I'm going to peel this up. And so I have my whole piece of paper here. And I'm going to remove this from the stencil. You guys, peeling stencils is like my favorite thing in the history of the world. Like... If somebody stenciled all day or if I stenciled all day, I could just sit here all day and peel the stencils. Ready? Oh, so cool. And now I really have to wash the stencil. I know that Marianne Samuelson um, from the Rabbit Hole Designs has like a really cool trick with your stencils is you can take a bag, like a Ziploc bag, and put some Windex in it. Um, you know, like an inch or so of the liquid. And um, just toss your stencil in there until you can clean it and it comes out great and clean and that's fine and dandy, but I just save up all my stencils and wait and clean them. Um, so now I have this stencil and it's got this blue and brown and all this cool stuff going on. I'm going to take my black soot. I think this is like the first ink pad that I'm going to have to replace. And I'm going to start off the paper and go onto the paper.
And we're just gonna ink blend all the way around. Yeah, Sandy does the Windex baggy thing too. I don't like it because, okay. <laughs> Here's why I don't like it. Because your Windex turns brown like really fast. And it's super icky to me. Right, Amy? I can agree with you on that. Shh, whatever. That's crazy talk. Washing your stencils. Who washes their stencils? Weirdos. Um especially when it all turns like brown. So I have my distress sprayer and I'm just gonna spray little bits around. And I always like short spray, meaning that I don't like just pull the trigger so that it sprays. I like, you know, like squeeze it lightly so that it um, has like big droplets and stuff. Um, but. So yeah, I can't handle the Windex baggy because the first time you put a stencil in there, the Windex turns funky colors and it hurts me. So I can't do it. Uh, I know, right? Blue, green, brown, it really doesn't matter. It still works fantastic. Um, so look at that. Isn't that cool? Okay, so now we have one more thing that we have to do just because I think it's super fun. And I'm going to take my paper pad and I'm going to fold it up and create what I call the Oki splatter box. So this piece of paper up here is like covering everything on my desk and this piece is um, covering whatever else I have. So this, um, so this is a little bowl that I got from my cousin. She made it for me and this is a funky, busted, terrible brush. And this is uh, Liquitex. Um, this is just acrylic paint. So this is like a gold colored acrylic paint. And so what I do is I just take a little tiny bit. Like you seriously don't need very much at all. One little dollop. And then I take my distress sprayer. And I put a couple of squirts of water in there. And I take my funky brush and I mix it up. And these tiny bowls are perfect for this. And since I let my brush dry with paint on it, it's like super duper funky. But there we go. I'll just break it up. Okay. I like it because it makes slightly larger splatters when it's all funky. That's why I don't um, go in and clean it right away. But it's acrylic paint, so it'll come off. Just soak it. Okay. So now we have some cool splatters on there. And I can go like this. I should have done that last time, but I didn't. And then I can go like this, and my bowl is clean and ready for the next time. Set that aside. Now, this is wet right now. So, um, I'm gonna speed up the drying process by grabbing my, grabbing my heat gun. So plug your ears for a moment.
really tell when this is dry. Um, I mean, you can tell just by looking at the paint when it's dry and when it's not. So there it is. Um, so now we're going to talk about this little walrus guy and putting him here. And I will, I will walrus be your friend. Ooh, maybe I want to make this a vertical card. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Okay. So then I'm going to pull off the sentiment that I will walrus be your friend. And I'm going to take my Misty. And I'm going to try to not stick those together. <laughs> Because y'all know how terrible it is when you stick those things together. I am going to put this in here. And then I'm going to position this up here. And then I'm going to like, you know, kind of lay this out and be like, do I like that? Is that what I want? Pretty sure that's what I want because I'm going to tie a bow around it. But maybe I'll go like this and tie the bow at the bottom. Kind of like that. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Just like that. So I'm going to take the walrus out of here. Then I'm going to make sure by using the grid on my Misty that my words are straight. I know the gold is really cool on top of those dark like browns and grays and stuff. Um, I always like wipe off my stamp just to make sure that I'm going to get a good impression. Yep, that's the right embossing powder. So I'm going to grab my Rabbit Hole Designs, um, embossing brush. And I'm going to put embossing powder all over this thing. Because I don't want embossing powder to stick on anything. Um, these brushes are amazing because most of the time your embossing buddy is made with like a cornstarch baby powder type thing. And by nature, that is a binder. So this has some special kind of clay powder in it. And um, that is a repellent. So it does not bind. Um, but you have to be very careful to never touch the brush. I know the brush looks super soft and beautiful, but don't touch it because once you get the oils from your fingers on it, then it's ruined. And those little brushes are refillable. So they're amazing. I almost need a refill on mine. Use your espresso to make sure you get a good impression. Do you guys love making cards? I just freaking love this. I just freaking love this. It's so much fun. Thank y'all for hanging out with me. I appreciate it. Okay. So now I'm gonna take my magnets out. I'm gonna be careful not to touch anything on here. And then I'm going to grab a spare piece of paper. This is the same piece I used the other day. I love my little embossing powder thing. These little spoons Sandy got me for my embossing powder because Sandy's a really good bestie. Check that out. There's a little spot down here that I missed, so I'm going to put more powder on that. Look at that, perfect, so perfect. Okay, embossing buddy, um, if you don't have one, you need one. It's the rabbit hole designs embossing tool. I don't even really know what it's called. It's just the rabbit hole designs embossing tool. You need it. Okay, so since my, I didn't spill anything on that paper, I spilled some on my desk mat though. I always get rid of it so that when I do emboss, I don't end up um, with, you know, embossing powder everywhere. I know. She's such a good Betty. Cottontail embossing powder tool. Thank you, Marianne. I didn't even know you were here. 
silly girl. Okay, so now I'm going to heat set this. Been lurking that's all right you can lurk away babe okay so I had a spool of ribbon on my desk that would be perfect for this and I probably put it away um, what a terrible person I am that I actually put it away so lame okay so I think that I'm going to use blue Oh, dude, it's sitting right here. <laughs> Check this out. So I'm gonna tie my special bow again. So I'm gonna take my ribbon and pinch it between my thumb and my middle finger. I'm gonna do a figure eight once, twice around my fingers. I do have an affiliate link. If you guys want embossing tools, I have an affiliate link for the rabbit hole designs. I would love for you to use it. Um, so you take this, you put it in between your fingers and you come around and tie that in there. Okay, um, it's no extra cost to you. So if you would use my affiliate link, that would be great. If you go to my website, www.sweetsentiment.us, it is under the category, my favorite things. And you will see my affiliate link or Tyler or Sandy can post it. Um, oh, thanks, Marianne. I earn a few cents. Yes. <laughs> I do earn a few cents. And it will help me purchase a refill for my embossing tool, which I totally need. So there we go. Okay. Now I'm also going to measure out a piece of this ribbon and um, thanks to my mom for buying me this ribbon for Christmas. I always tell her that I want organza ribbon for Christmas and so she always buys me a big old thing of organza ribbon. So, all different colors. I have like a full rainbow of it. I love it. I could have organza ribbon for everything. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take my sukuwing tape or score tape as you probably know it and huh, I should probably grab a card base too because I haven't done that part yet either. But that's all right. We're getting there. It's so funny for me in these lives because when I sit down to make a card, um, especially if I'm coloring, thank you, Tyler. I appreciate you posting my link there. Um, it usually takes me like three or four hours to make a card. Um between coloring and laying it out and all that stuff. So me choose a number between one and 29 or everybody choose a number between one and 29. Um, and so it takes me a long time to make a card. So when I am doing lives, it's really hard for me to stay like under an hour. So we're gonna exceed an hour by a little bit today. My apologies. So I like to take my tape and fold it up so that I can still reposition whatever it is that I'm doing. Um, so for right now, I'm just gonna do these two side pieces because I know that I am going to position my ribbon before I position this on the card base. Me please, um, do you want me to say it out loud or do you want me to just choose the number? Okay. Then I use the grid on my little desk mat here and I line up what I have going on here, just like that. And then I attach it. Oh, 
Um, I choose five. Okay, so then I'm gonna fold up these other pieces so that I can attach this to my card base. If I had a card base handy, I'll go grab one. Sandy and Cameron organize my craft room so I know where everything's at. So here's my card base. Sorry, I didn't mean to hit the camera. And I'm gonna go ahead and position this. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure, this, okay, where my fold is first because you know, that's a thing. And I'm just gonna like tack this down so that I know I can reposition it if I need to. This is why I like to use wet glue, but when I use ribbon, I usually use the score tape. Okay, so this is all tacked down where it should be. So then I can pull the little strips and my card base is lined up perfectly. I won the giveaway. <laughs> what did I win? <laughs> he better make somebody else the winner. <laughs> okay, so now I have this silly walrus and of course I'm gonna put him up on Sweet Pops. So Sweet Pops are in the shop if you need them. We'll try again. You want me to pick a different number? Um, and Sweet Pops are in the shop. You guys can't live without them. I promise you. They're super important. Oh my gosh, the fan page for your birthday and I won. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> And then I have this little one that I had like, you know, cut like a couple days ago. And so I'm just going to put it on his little flipper here. I cut my sweet pops a lot. I have a pair of scissors dedicated for cutting the sweet pops. So I cut them a ton and that's one of the best things about them. Oh, sweet. Okay, so then I take my bright rainbow walrus. Now, where do I want this bow? Do I want it here? Oh my gosh. I'm throwing everything today. Like I have butterfingers today. I swear I can't hold on to anything. Okay. So I put my sweet pops away and oh my gosh, it's so cute. I love it. The only thing that I would do, um, is add a little something underneath him and oh my gosh, watch me. Watch me get dirty. Who's who's here? Is I'm gonna peel him up just a little bit. Just to kind of ground him a little bit so it doesn't look like he's floating out in outer space there. Ew. You know I will be promptly washing my hands. It does. You popped in just as I was getting dirty, Holly. Ew. Okay. So then I will take my glue gun. And I'll add a little spot of glue to the back of this. 
And I think I'm just gonna center it. And there we go. Um, I also like to decorate the inside of my card a little bit. So sometimes what I'll do is I will take my stencil and I will just put it at the corner here. And I'll take one of my brushes and I will just lightly go around my stencil like that. So that there's a little bit of decoration inside of my card. Cost you zero dollars. <laughs> so there you go, guys. Um, we have completed a Rainbow Walrus card start to finish. And it only took about an hour, which is crazy for me. Because you guys know how long it usually takes me to make a card. So hours and hours and hours. Um... So thank you guys for joining me. I appreciate it. I will be back next week. Um, yeah, I do love the soft touch inside. And they can, you know, people can write over it entirely. I usually always do this too. I take that and I take a pen and I sign my cards. So there you go, Jamie Clark original. Um, so I will be back on Monday. Thanks, Natalie. Uh, thanks, Sherry. I appreciate it. Um, I will be back on Monday at 9 o'clock again, Mountain Time. So the tame, same time, same bat channels, same bat place. Um, and we will see you on Monday. So have a wonderful weekend, friends. And oh, thanks, Joanne. I didn't even see you jump in either. Um, I know, I have to go cut my finger off because it's dirty now. Um, thanks, Tyler. <laughs> um, so don't forget to sign up for the virtual retreat. And I will see you guys all on Monday. Toodles!